This is the plaintiff, Joseph Wheeler. He says the defendants moved into a property he owns in Orlando, Florida, and they continually flush things into the toilet that shouldn't be flushed, if you know what it means. They also got a dog who wreaked havoc on his place, and then to top things off, they moved out in the middle of the night without informing him. He's suing the slackers for $3,179.82, the amount he's owed. These are the defendants, Julianne DeLucci and Brock Dinsmore. Julie says there were issues with the apartment from day one, and they told the plaintiff about them over and over again. They did their homework and discovered there were 17 code violations on the place. The way the plaintiff operates is atrocious. He's nothing more than a shady slumlord, and they owe that chump nothing. They're accused of getting out early. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant moved into a crib he owns in Orlando, started flushing stuff down the toilet and getting it all messed up. But the defendant says the plaintiff is a slumlord. It's the case of Untidy Bowl. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're okay, welcome. Joseph Wheeler, you are suing Julianne Deleuze and Brock Densmore for $3,179.82 that you say they owe you in back rent and fees. Tell me what's going on. My wife and I own a travel agency in Orlando, Florida, and we also have some rental property. About the uh, second week in August of 2010, I advertised the property. Oh, uh, you're starting way back. Yes. <laughs> they move in and what goes wrong? Uh, approximately two weeks after they moved in, they contacted me and said that there was uh, a few little issues they'd like to have cleared up. Um, the biggest of which was they wanted the bathroom tile to be regrouted. I regrouted the entire bathroom. At that time, I had them initial paragraph five on the lease stating they had checked it out thoroughly and everything was in good repair and order. Okay. Um, everything seemed to be fine for approximately eight months. Uh, at that time, they called me and said they were having a problem with some mice. I notified them that underneath the terms of the lease, it was the tenant's responsibility to take care of extermination. Although I would have, I would come over and set some bait traps. I did that. And then a couple of weeks later, they contacted me and said that their kitchen drawer had broken. I have some photographs. I mean, it didn't just break, it was destroyed. Um, one of that- photographs. These are the photographs of the kitchen drawer and I basically had to rebuild it. Okay. And they had a leak underneath the bathroom did sink. Did they say how it had- uh, They did not. Broken? Okay, well, are you, why are you implying they did something wrong? I mean, it's sort well, of, it's, I, it's a little it's more sort of than, cheap. It's not exactly like dovetailed or anything else. It's just no, like nailed in. But it's and, a little bit more than just pulling the drawer and having the face know. pop off. I don't know I that mean, that's it, obvious to me from what I'm seeing, but okay, so go ahead. Okay. So, and, and they had a couple little other issues that needed to be attended to. Um, you know, there was a leak underneath the bathroom sink. Took care of that. Um, everything was fine. On the, uh, it was uh, April 25th, uh, they called me and said they had a problem with the toilet flushing properly. I went over, I inspected it, the main line was clogged up. I rented a plumbing snake, I cleared the main line. Everything was fine for about three weeks. And then they called me again, very irate, in the middle of the night, stating that the commode was backed up again, it was overflowing. The next morning, I cleared the line again. With a, another snake with that a, you rented? With a plumbing snake again, yes. That you rented again I or rented you again. a plumbing snake? Yes, I rented again, I have the receipts. Okay, um, and then? And I discovered that she was flushing her feminine products down the commode. You do understand that that's actually the manufacturer's suggested way of disposal, right? Like that's uh, actually how it's done. Unless there's a reason that you can't, like you have old plumbing, which, you know, could happen. It, well, and so then you just have to tell a woman. Right. You well, just have to tell a sister. It, it is in you the know? least. You know, you just got to yeah. let her know. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, but had you, that's my point. Had you ever I hadn't told specifically told okay. them that, no, right. that I recall, but it is in the lease. It states that any any blockage of the main sewer line will be their responsibility. So I told at them this that, time, you then tell them, I am going to charge you for what? Correct. For clearing the sewer line. And, Which, the and how much were you going to charge them for that? 64.91 times two. Uh, right. They also had uh, the repairs that were agreed to underneath the lease, if anything, under $75. And what repair are you referring to? The kitchen drawer mm -hmm. and the uh, repairing underneath the sink. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, and they had agreed in, in that one. lease. And we're going to talk okay. about that in a second, because I think that might have ended up being a surprise what you agreed to uh, that under 75, they they'd stomach. And also right. the extermination service. How did they end up being sixty five dollars when all you did was put out a few mousetraps? Well, it was it was fifty dollars for the service call from and whom? Then from myself. Says who? Well, in the lease, it states that if they contact me to provide services for them, they will pay a $50 service fee, plus wow. the cost of materials. The strange part is that you didn't charge that. How much was the rental of the snake? Uh, the rent of the snake was $14.91. Oh, you did charge it on the other ones. Yes, okay. $50 for the, for the service call, and then the cost of the snake. See, um, this is where, you know, sometimes in an anatomy of a case, you can actually see where everything goes into the um, toilet. So <laughs> okay, pardon the uh, pun in this case. Mm -hmm. And that's where it happened because you've rented before. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. These are all things a landlord pays for, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And the drawers are falling apart and yeah. there's mice and there's whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm saying it from their perspective. Right. It's just got plumbing problems. Great. And the guy comes and fixes it himself. Doesn't hire a licensed contractor. To, fixes it himself and looks at you and says, by the way, you owe me $65 for today. Right. $64.91 for the other day. And sixty four ninety one for the other day, and fifty bucks for the drawer and the other leak. And we you're you're looking at him like what? Go that ahead. was this. We didn't know about these charges that he was suing until us for week. the itemized ones until this week. This is the first time we heard about the fifty dollar drawer. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, your answer. Hold on. Okay. In your answer to the complaint, you actually say that that's what went wrong between you guys. I thought it was that he had submitted the bill to you. Whoa. Did you give them a notice saying you're going to owe me all this money for repairs? I did. I and provided that was him in May, with an invoice. Right? I'm in that May, was in May, May 22nd. Right? Yes, ma'am. Right. And then how did you give them that notice? I posted it on their door. I okay. hand-delivered it. Did you guys get it. a no, notice posted on your door that said you'd be owing me no, this stuff? No, ma'am. Okay. It's right in your lease, though, right? Yes. I believe it does. Yeah. Don't sign a lease that says that again. Okay. Uh, and then don't be surprised if magically every bill is under 75 bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right. You tell me then, what went wrong that made you just snap? The backing up of the toilet? That and then it was the tile job that he did was fine a couple months in and but it didn't it was a very temporary fix. Eventually two of the tiles completely fell off of the shower. As far as the mice were concerned, that's something I couldn't deal with. I couldn't I just couldn't. Okay, so you call code enforcement and code enforcement comes out on what day? The seventeenth. May seventeenth. May right, and it does not go well for you, my friend, right? No, not at all. No, not at all. In fact, 17 different violations. A lot of them having to do with the sealing of the house and that it, it wasn't correctly sealed. But let's go over the violations. Okay, free the windows painted shut. Whose brilliant idea was that? There That's was a fire no windows hazard. painted shut. There are numerous things on here that were not accurate. And I actually had to end up going over the code enforcement's head to the department head to have them cleared. Do you have paperwork that closed this out? Um, I, it was closed out, yes. I don't but want I to do hear not, you talk. I, I, want, to sh I want you to I show me something. I do not have the closing of the file, but yes, it has been why, closed. Why wouldn't you bring that? I don't know, honestly. Yeah, honestly, it it's mystifying because yeah. one reason you didn't bring it is because you're not I mean, bright, like, and I don't think that's it. Or that another reason you might not have brought it is because it doesn't exist. And that might be the oh, conclusion I reach exists. if I don't see it. And there might be some reasons why I might reach those conclusions. Well. Right? Like a little history that you might have with the city on these kinds of topics. So is it safe, proper to flush feminine hygiene products down the toilet? No, absolutely not. Why? Unless you hit your landlord. <laughs> I mean, is it, I mean, will it, will it clog things up? Yes, it doesn't fit. <laughs> what? Tampons are made to expand. So it's gonna expand. It's because there's so much water. So, I mean, it's gonna get big and it's gonna clog your pipes. Betty Nye, the science guy. I like that. Thank you very much. Thanks for the lesson. I'll remember it. Going inside the courtroom. Why don't you tell me history he has with the city and code enforcement on, in Orlando well, on this property? Well, I was able to, once I accessed the Orange County Property Appraisers website, you see all of the properties that Mr. Wheeler owns. And once you go on to code enforcement, um, their website, you can see, you know, all of the detailed violations for each of these properties. And, and? they are excessive some of them really really awful um for example two houses down there was a homeless person living in the back of one of his sheds vacant houses run down squatter living in the shed and back 
two doors down from our house. Did you know it before no. you read it? No, I found this like well, Matt, two weeks ago. Maybe he didn't ago. know it either. Because <laughs> <I was, laughs> like, you apparently found an article. I did that had find been written an article. By the, uh, by the paper about certain landlords in town. And unfortunately, you're one of the landlords they wrote about, yeah, right? True. Number three. How much do you owe Orlando? Like a million bucks or something? Zero. When you say you owe them zero, what happened? Is that case resolved or you it had was. a hearing? Okay. Yes. yes. So do you have that paperwork? I do not no, now presently, okay. but you, That's it, fine. it is it's fine. written It's off. fine because that doesn't have to do with my case. Yeah. My case is very specific. I have the following issue in front of me. You then, with all these violations, send him a letter and you tell him, we're not paying you a penny of rent until you take care of these violations. Yes, ma'am. And then you live rent free. And how much is the rent? Seven ninety five. You live rent free for three months there mm -hmm. till the end of your lease mm -hmm. and then you move out. Yeah. So now, once they move out, you don't even know they've moved out. No, ma'am. Right. So how do you find out they've moved out? Because you guys aren't communicating during those three months? You're not trying no. to get things back into place. I did. I, we went over to the property and we started making repairs to the property as I feel was necessary by my responsibility and the city code. Well, let's see what else they say. They say... Um, Free windows painted shut and provide operable locks. Provide uh, rodent extermination, which actually falls under your obligation in the, in the lease. Correct. Um, replace all damaged siding, seal all exterior holes and walls, paint all damaged siding on structure under permit with approval. Remove mold, black staining at loose tile at bath, replace felled tile, regrout tub and shower, replace inoperable refrigerator with an operable one. What was wrong with the fridge? It didn't work ever. It, it leaked water <laughs> Oh, that's what it is, and, right? But and it, it would freeze all of our food that was in the fridge. Like so provide either... operable, oh, actually, you, I did see a letter where you were complaining that it's half frozen, yes. half, okay. Yes. Provide operable smoke, no smoke detectors in the fridge? It plant? had smoke detectors, it had two. The batteries had been removed. Okay, you had a lot to do here. Provide skirting, provide, okay. Needless to say, you, uh, well, A, as you're standing here today, you don't have proof that all these were closed out, but certainly they didn't get closed out anyway during the three months that they were living there, right? Yes, because of there was a contention over some of these items okay, so between I'm myself and the code enforcement I understand, officer. so I'm correct on correct. what I said. Correct, yes. All right. When did it finally get cleared up? Um, in August. Okay, and is the place yeah. re-rented? It is. Okay, as yes. of what, September? September. Okay, you moved out at the beginning of August, right? August 3rd, yes. August 3rd, okay. I have the closing, the closed code enforcement when he did get everything up oh, to Oh, you code. have it? Let's yes. see it. So here's what we got, all right? Oh, let me see your pictures. These are pictures that you took while you were living there, right? Yes, ma'am. And these okay. we and they're sent important to and relevant because here's where, where we are. You're trying to convince me that you should not have to pay any rent because A, there's 17 violations, and B, it's so uninhabitable that nobody should be even forced to pay one penny of rent. Not that you should get a rent reduction, but that you shouldn't have to pay a penny. Shouldn't have been rented. Yeah. This is a really close up pictures. What are you taking a picture of? I'm not sure. That, that's the skirting around There's the house. There's a further back picture. There is, if you look at the pictures, there is skirting around the house. There were just a few places where it was either loose or- What is this a picture of? That was how he filled one of the holes. We had animals running around under the house. Who's this? That's our puppy. Oh, that's the one. Okay. That was the how did you have a puppy? Okay, I know, but I saw your lease. Your lease allowed you to have two cats. Mm -hmm. And you paid $100 each in pet fee for yes. each of them. What would make you argue to me then that you shouldn't have to pay another $100 for the puppy that you got without uh, without when, paying a pet fee? When we, we offered to pay for the pet fee. Okay, so you know you owe the pet fee, right? Because he's suing you for the pet fee here. Yes. Can I see your copy of the lease, please? Yes, ma'am. Okay, according to this, all of these uh, violations weren't closed out until... September of 2011. Yeah, it's been a year since we moved out. Right. Have I now seen all of the pictures? Yeah. All right. I agree with you that the violations are such that you should be able to have a rent reduction. I do not agree with you that the violations are such that you should be able to skate rent free for three months. Okay, I'm going to order them to pay half of the, the rent is 795, right? Correct. $1,192 in rent for those three months, okay? Uh, not an early termination fee because you can't have both. As far as the repairs and extermination and pet fee, we've discussed that. And you folks are gonna have to pay that as well um, because that's right in your lease. Know what you sign when you sign it. Uh, and that means a judgment in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $1,537.32. But he already has a security deposit of how much? $795. So we're going to subtract that. And that leaves a judgment in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $742.32. That's my judgment. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, so the plaintiff does collect some. Step on in here. Yes. What about what he got out of this? You satisfied how this came out? No, honestly. Um, well, I am, a, I am a little hopeful that maybe everybody sees the kind of person that he why is and the check, kind of house that he keeps. Why didn't you check this uh, this residence out more thoroughly before you moved in and found all this? There, there were tenants there already, and when we we got there the day after she moved out, so it was there was no layover time. So we really had no chance to see the house. Well, what was your quality of life like with all these it was situations? Awful. It was you terrible. Would, you, it was just describing. a miserable, miserable existence, and we were just really happy to be out of it and then a year later he comes back and uh it comes back to haunt us but we're just well, glad listen, that read we never the have lease to carefully it. read it carefully yeah, before you did. sign it learn next from time. our mistakes okay. absolutely right, right around the corner right. go Thank go down this way place. all right let's see what the landlord has to say about the outcome here um how do you think you look in this whole deal here i don't know i, I try and provide safe clean and affordable housing to everyone um you know unfortunately you get some people sometimes that don't want to take care of the property and then they want to blame you for it well, they so, had some valid complaints, right? There were some valid complaints, yes, and I tried to address those the best I could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Over to Harvey. Okay, you know, it's dangerous to withhold rent if the apartment isn't up to snuff. What you should do, if it really is a mess, you can put it in an escrow account. That way you're not showing the judge you're just not paying. You're putting the money in in good faith, and then the judge can decide how much, if any, you're allowed to withhold. And that will do it for this case, litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.